So we are back in My Energy Game. We are back with a new podcast and a new expert, a good friend of ours, Richard Girva. How are you, Richard? I am great, Edu. How are you? Very well, thank you. So Richard is a well-famous speaker and an author, a former educator, an expert on human behavior, leadership and change. So, I mean, we are thrilled to have Richard in this podcast. So Richard, we said that we were going to, you know, do something quite interesting. And you mentioned something about pocket chip analogy. I mean, tell me a little bit about it. <laughs> yeah, look, and one of the things that I think has fascinated me for many years, and I've been very lucky um, on and off through my career to work with elite athletes in different uh, professional sports, whether it's football, cricket, golf, rugby, um, Olympic sports. One of the things that has fascinated me through all of that, and I remember hearing it for the first time uh, when I first got involved in sports, actually, and it was that sometimes the most naturally gifted athletes don't make it to the highest level. And that really fascinated me. And I wanted to explore why. <laughs> and I think what was really interesting was the first thing that people need to understand is because somebody has a natural gift or talent at something, whether it's sports, whether it's academics, whether it's the arts, that doesn't mean they're the finished package. And I think one of the mistakes we make in, particularly in high profile, high pressure sports like football, is we get these young kids, boys and girls who are uber talented, naturally gifted into the game and we push them through the system. And we just almost ignore their human development and the stuff that's really going to make the difference, you know, and, and the best way I can describe it is what I call the poker chip analogy. So imagine that every child um, who has a gift or talent has a little bag full of poker chips, right? Now, the poker chips are the best way to describe them self-esteem. Now, you think about the really, really talented kid at school, okay? So some of them will be listening to this. Some of them, some of you will know people who were like this as children. Children who were just obscenely naturally talented at sports, not necessarily football at first, but you knew they had something special. Their hand-eye coordination, their balance, their speed, um, you know, their agility. And what happens with those kids? is they, so let's take football, right? So they start to kick a football and they kick a football better than all their friends. And they're able to move better than all their friends. So when football becomes a, an organized thing, they're just better than everyone else in their team and, and in the opposition. So they're used to winning. You know, they're the kid that runs the length of the field and scores a hat trick every three minutes, right? <laughs> and the rest of us are like, oh, but, the thing is they then get spotted and they go and play for a local team, right? And then they get spotted again and they maybe get to an academy. Now, up until that point, that kid has never failed, never struggled, never lost, never come up against adversity. And they're used to winning and winning relatively easily, right? But then you get to an academy and you get quite high up into the academy. So now you're in the rarefied air of being a player who might really make it as a professional, right? And for the first time in your life, you are surrounded by other players who are as good, if not better than you are. Now, what's really interesting, go back to the little bag of poker chips of self-esteem, right? That kid has probably only ever accrued one poker chip because they've never actually had to gamble their self-esteem because they've, they've always won, right? They've never had to go to the poker table. They've never had to go to the roulette wheel and actually gamble some of that self-esteem. And for the first time ever, they are. Now, what's really interesting is in that academy, amongst that cohort of other now really gifted potential professional footballers, are kids that have come up the hard way, that maybe weren't as naturally gifted, right? But had to put in real graft, real effort, uh, whose parents had to sacrifice huge amounts to get them even close to the opportunity they had. They may have come from really challenging backgrounds, you know, where they had um, disrupted families or, or difficult per personal circumstances. And the thing about human development is that every time you overcome adversity, whether you recognize it or not, you get to put another poker chip in your little bag of poker chips. 
right? So that when the day comes when you're in the casino and there's somebody there, let's say a senior academy coach, right? Who is asking you to push yourself out of your comfort zone, to try something different, to learn a new skill, to adapt and play in a different position or use different tactics to anything you've done before. There are two kinds of kids who rock up into that environment. There are those that have grafted, that have uh, had to fail or been through adversity in their lives. They got bagfuls of poker chips. And then you've got the kid that's always flown with the one poker chip in their bag. And you, the coach, every time you ask them to try to do something new, are rolling the roulette wheel and spinning the ball. And you're saying to those young players, go on, bet some of your self-esteem. So put a chip on red or black or odd or even, or even an individual number. Now, what happens at that point is the challenge. Those kids that have never, ever failed will be looking at the game thinking, I'd love to play it, but I've only got one poker chip. And if I put that one poker chip on black and it comes up red, or if I put it on odd and it comes up even, or even if I were to dare to put it on a single number and I don't win, I've got nothing left. So what they tend to do are two things. They either stand in the shadows, looking at the game, thinking I'd love to have the confidence to engage, but I just don't. Or they walk away and rather than lose that one poker chip, they give up and leave altogether, right? Meanwhile, those other kids that have clawed their way up, that have experienced adversity, have got more poker chips in their bag, they'll put one on red and it doesn't matter if it comes up black because they got plenty left. So one of the really interesting things for me when we're thinking about coaching and developing young athletes is to remember natural talent in one area does not guarantee everything. And actually the first job of work we have to do, I believe, is to make sure that all of our young players have enough poker chips to truly play the game and to truly develop and to push themselves beyond where they are already. Because the final thought at this point I'll give you is, is this, and I learned this as an educator. You learn nothing new by getting something right. You only ever learn something new from the point of a mistake or the realization that you don't know something or you can't do something. And that's scary because that means you've got to push yourself to breaking point, right? You have to be prepared to step out of your comfort zone. So we need to make sure the young people we're working with and developing have enough self-confidence to play that game. Fascinating, Richard. I mean, listening to you, I'm thinking about the roller coaster of obviously the season and the career of any of those young players or any of the professional level players already. I mean, consolidated players who probably never had too much a struggle in academy level and uh, even when they were in that academy, surrounded by all the very potentially um, elite athletes. And then they went into professional level, and then they certainly struggled because they didn't embrace setbacks or mistakes, or they didn't have that many in the, in the pathway. Yeah. So, I mean, for some time, sorry, Edu, for some time. We can extend that to professional level. Yeah, and, and for sometimes, you know, that might not be necessarily on the on the pitch in terms of their form or their ability to fit in. It could be the first time in their life they experience a serious injury or setback. And actually their confidence to spring back from that is seriously dented. You know, one of the things we have to do is make sure that we push every one of our players to a point where they they lose, they fail. It's a really important part of their development. And actually the crucial point for coaches is to be there to support that athlete and to help them rebuild. Because of course the poker chip gets put in the bag, not when you fail, but when you overcome the adversity and you come back from that adversity. Because the more poker chips you have then, whatever the challenge, the obstacle you face moving forwards, whatever that might be, the more poker chips you have, the more confident you are, you'll find a way through it. Absolutely. And then as a person is the same. I mean, not just as a professional, but as a person, obviously the obstacles of, you know, nowadays, you know, the life that we are living with the virus and obviously with in, in family relationships, in relationships with your friends, relationships in a school, relationships at work. I mean, it, it could be extended to, you know, just in general, building resilience, right? 
Yep. And it's it's a really, you're absolutely right. And it, in a way, it's a way of seeing adversity, right? If you go into any situation, whether it's, uh, you know, you're, you're in a relationship that's going through a struggle, whether it's, you know, uh, problems you're having outside of your professional sporting life, or whether it's in your professional sporting life. One of the things I often say to people, and particularly athletes, actually, when they're going through struggles, is remember that although it may feel really rubbish in the moment, you're learning in this point. You're learning far more now than you are when things are going well. And that's, it goes back to that point. You learn nothing new by getting something right. And so if it, it doesn't necessarily make you feel better in the moment, but if you can capture that and remember that every time you're going through a challenge in your life, it's actually a point at which you're going to grow and develop and learn. You're able to see whatever that challenge is in constructive terms. The, the worst thing, is to allow yourself to slip into a kind of victim mentality. And you see that all too often, particularly in high performance environments, where it's really easy for a footballer to fall into believing that the fates are against them. No matter what they do, it's going to turn to shit if you'll excuse the language, right? And actually, What's really, really important is to remember that as long as you regard the challenges and adversity you're going through as a point of learning, an opportunity to build the poker chips in your little bag and an opportunity to learn from it, then, then, you can, then you can grow. And actually, I've seen a number of athletes that I've worked with who have been able to flip that idea and actually now will often say to me things like, Richard, I'm going through a tough time, but you know what? I'm learning so much. And that changes the mentality and outlook of the moment you're in. Well, I'll tell you what, in just 10 minutes, Richard, you, you've just changed mine. I mean, <laughs> now every time I'm going to have a setback for the next few days, I'm going to be thinking about this analogy of pocket chip back. And I, I, I'm loving it. Do you mind if I just make it mine? No, Edu, it's fine. Honestly, I'm not proud. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time, Richard. It's excellent that you obviously agreed to, to join us in my energy game. It's superb. It's brilliant for us to have you as one of our experts. Uh, we couldn't be more proud. We couldn't be more humble and grateful. And yeah, thank you so much. Edu, it's such a pleasure. It's an honor to be involved. And I look forward so much to not only catching up with you and the team, but all of the people that hopefully we can help over the coming months and years.